Oh, wow. How exciting. Well, maybe I should share something then. Um, well, thank you very much and welcome to uh, uh, welcome to my talk. I'm a little distracted here. I had a friend who came over and just brought me a whole bunch of peanut butter cups, homemade peanut butter cups. Maybe I'll show those off uh, <laughs> later. What? Okay, here, uh, put it right there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to uh, get over to my planned uh, stuff I'm sharing here, hopefully. Uh, and and we'll jump, jump right in because I'm going to need as much time as I can possibly have today. Thanks so much for uh, joining me for Emacs Conference and for especially for... Um, all of you who, who who participated, you know, in the discussions, contributing talks, and um, you know, up, you know, including running the the the, and it's just so much fun to be here. Um, I guess while I'm standing here and and, and saying stuff that's that I'm going to have to transcribe because I didn't uh, prepare a a recorded version, uh, I had a lot of trouble trimming this down, so. I can solve that problem by just talking a lot at the beginning uh, about other stuff. Um, <laughs> so in addition to the thanks, I just want to say thanks also to the folks on the development list that helped me kind of come up to speed on this. I won't make a big list here, but, um, and, and, and for all that I've learned from the previous conferences, it's just, I can't stress enough what a great opportunity volunteering for uh, free software related things are uh, as a way to get involved. People will just totally teach you how to be helpful, and I'm loving it. So, Sasha, can you please maximize COVID? I can preview the stream, but it's not super easy right now. I got all my screens kind of dedicated to other stuff. Mm -hmm. So, should I pause for a second before I? get into the slides because those they're they'll be hard to see if I'm not full screen. Yeah, that would be nice. Okay. Well I'll keep ad libbing then because I just have a million uh things I can say. Um uh so uh let me just quickly talk uh things that aren't in here. Um I'm gonna mention the mysis 2org and the that project which provides a port of uh, the GNU uh, uh, GLUB-C and a lot of GNU and uh, other free software. Um, so uh, I right, don't... I'm switching a room to... Uh, I'm giving you a room to Stefan. All right, so I'm going to take Mumble out of my... Uh, <laughs> pardon me, folks. Just going to take Mumble out of my speakers here. Okay, right. we'll take the speakers out of play entirely and I'll just switch to some headphones. All right, so... Okay, Erwin, you're good to go. Perfect. What an amazing amount of time. All right, so thanks a lot. Uh, today, I've got a jam-packed talk. Um, I've, I've done my best to make to make this not too overwhelming, but overall, we're going to try to try to actually build um, Emacs while we're talking today, and we might actually build several Emacs. Uh, so let's take a look at that real quick. Um, so over here, we have a screen where I am just once a minute looking uh, indirectly at whether there have been any pushes uh, upstream to either the Emacs 29 or Emacs 30 branches. So I've arranged for us to sort of keep an eye on that. Um, while we talk and, you know, maybe th that's, that's one thing that we'll do. And then additionally, we'll probably fire up a shell. This is the MySys2 environment that I talked talked about before, and we'll probably create some directories and things. But before we get into all that, let's, let's give some, some context. Uh, I've been doing my best to try to uh, make sure all this information is on the Emacs wiki as well. So, uh, sorry, as I said, I got a little caught off guard, so I'm moving my foot pedals <laughs> to the back to the floor here. 
and I should be able to advance slides here. All right. So um, I kind of provided some special definitions for things. I'm going to kind of level set with those. The uh, um, when I say a binary release, I'm talking about some some. Uh, I'm talking about Emacs for Windows as uh, just ready to run out of its folder or in whatever similar form. The when I say a build, I'm I'm talking about kind of a process of doing that. Uh, when Emacs.get, of course, that's the upstream hosted by GNU Savannah. The Emacs release is a, is a tarball created from that. The sources for um, Emacs are going to be one of those two things um, very specifically. So I'm not going to talk about patches, patching. There's some implications there. Perhaps we'll get into it. <laughs> uh, so a snapshot is when I build from anything other than a release source, uh, a tarball. Um, just if I, if I say that, I'm talking specifically about the, uh, the XZ version of the file as, as a technical point. Um, so that may come up. All right. Nothing else, I think, up my sleeve. Um, the, uh, as, as a key data point, it's worth understanding that there's a file called configure AC it's going to be processed uh, as part of AutoConf. We, we initially access that when we run um, AutoGen, as you'll see in a little bit. Um, the, but before, but, uh, so the AutoGen script will generally consider this. Uh, so in a release build, um, this has been thought about kind of for us as part of um, making the tarball. Um, the configure.ac, um, yeah, I think I pretty much covered, covered this. So, um, those, those, that kind of partially built status, that's, that might be another phrase that you hear me use. So this slide unpacks that a little more. Um, so it can be a little confusing to understand what exactly the, the you know, what is it, you know, how stable is Emacs depending on what I have. So the, I got a kind of a set of rules of thumb here, right? First, I want the highest, uh, you know, dot, uh, dot release value that I can get, assuming it, that that's higher than one. If it's, if it were to only be one, let's say my choices were 29.1 and 30.1, I would take 30.1, um, because that's that's weird. But um, what you'll normally see is you might see a 28.2, you might see a 29.1. So here I think 28.2 has got the most sta most most stable um, set uh, the uh, or set of release binaries. The 29.1 uh, will will have a little more features, but will tend to be more stable than uh, any uh, lower point releases for 29, uh, certainly than any release candidates for 29, which might even have new features, um, but are mostly gonna just be patches. So they're gonna become the most stable thing here. And especially if they, they, they have a, you know, if this, this is not, uh, if this were to be 29.2 release candidate one, as we're all looking forward to seeing. Um, the uh, 30.50 um, and and in between this this pretest here we're talking about kind of developer land um, so um, the expectation is that you know what you're doing that applies to Windows users uh, just as much if you are building anything in the snapshot range any of that is going to be in this 30.0.50 currently that will change when the uh, when the 30, 30, uh, an Emacs 30 release status uh, or release branch is coming. Okay, so let's talk about the local. Um, there's not much to know about what I have going on, except that I have my my paths mess, messed with. So <laughs> um, if, if that, that were to come up, if you're wondering how, why does this uh, ensys command work, that's probably the place where you notice it. 
Uh, I am using Windows 10. I haven't tried Windows 11. Uh, as mentioned, MySys2 is critical to all this. There's one script in particular that will error out if you try to do anything other than use MySys's my shell. And in fact, MySys owns or provides three shells, and of them, that script is designed to work with a specific one of them, as, as we'll come to. I don't talk about installing the dependencies, but just as, as kind of some kind of help, um, you can search using this formula and install uh, using this formula. Good luck with those, you know, grep commands. NSYS is the tool for building the self-installing, self-extracting installer or uh, executable self-installer. Um, the script for that is provided along with the Emacs source. Um, and I've provided a helpful link to the main page for the project. Down the link on the left, it is not, um, it's kind of scare where the way that this link appears, but I have clicked it and it's working for me. Automation, this, uh, we'll, we have some time, we'll be looking at this. At a minimum, I wanted to mention that what I do on my local, what you're seeing in the crawler, I hope, uh, represents a uh, uh, a simple sleep loop, uh, and we'll we'll look into that if we have time. Um, I do have a little bit. I do use like a cron job and so on to clean up some hosting that that I pay for, um, where I've got where I where I kind of self host some uh, snapshots, more stuff than I feel comfortable uploading to uh, Gen to GNU. The, um, you know, I never said, uh, my name is Corwin Bruce. For the last couple of years, I've been the volunteer making the, um, making the snapshots, the quote unquote official binaries uh, for Windows of the, um, of, of Emacs for Windows. So that's that's all the different versions. Uh, help is always welcome with that. I'd be very happy to teach you in more depth. But this video is, you know, kind of my drop dead file. Uh, I don't have specific plans. Uh, if somebody's like, hey, get out of the way. This is the one thing I think I can do. Um, hey, that's real relatable. <laughs> okay. Um, so I haven't tried uh, the, I haven't tried a lot of fun things that I won't talk about. Um, the, uh, the rest of this talk is going to get into the nitty gritty, as I said, um, if we can't convince Emacs to start building over on that screen, we'll be opening it up here on the center stage. Um, uh, this begins and there's, 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 there's great insight here too on the wiki, uh, with picking an FTP source for any official release that is for a stable product, please visit um ftp.gnu.org otherwise you'll want to switch that ftp dot at the beginning to alpha dot and take a pretest uh or any snapshot or otherwise that we will publish there the uh next uh you know i'm gonna you have some examples in here that assume that you're doing a release build that you're doing 29.1 but um i'm glancing out of a the right side of my face at the chat on the off chance anybody in there wants to direct me at a particular um we can make some other we can build something else if you want to see a snapshot build more mention that um the examples that you're going to see here that i will without other direction cut and paste um are all uh, based on the release build so um so uh we'll use the uh oh, i mentioned that there are several shells provided by mysys2 the min tw64 shell is the one that we mostly need um i have tested all of this as well with the min gw32 shell um so that that should work and and mix binaries that that, that work for me <clears throat> Uh, I, as I mentioned, I don't get into the details of installing all your prerequisites. I found that doing it in a head first manner wasn't, 
wasn't difficult and I also found that there's a number of tutorials. I didn't want to pick one to link here. Um, there, uh, here are, uh, okay, so our general formula for building Emacs, irrespective of Windows, looks like does the configure script exist if not run auto gen? From a Windows build standpoint, this is if I'm not running a release bent, release build, call the auto gen script, right? And this would be in the directory where we run pack, as I'll demonstrate within uh, three minutes if uh, <laughs> if one if nobody's pushed upstream to Emacs. Um, so uh, the configure uh, and uh, configure options are uh, uh, the, the configure. You know, if the configure sorry, if the configure script exists, then uh, doesn't doesn't exist. So the only reason. So in my process, I will always execute that step because I clean everything after every build um, in all my contexts. Um, however, if you were you know, had a, a checkout of the emacs.get and you are building it at several releases, then maybe you've got a configure script and then you all want to know um, the, you know, whether you have to bootstrap and the typical complexities, but otherwise you might be able to skip that in, in, in the abstract. Um, uh, is that right? Or is it, is it the make, uh, so, and if they make file doesn't exist, make install, I don't, I'm looking at that and I'm questioning whether it's correct. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. <laughs> um, in any case, uh, so autogen configure make install is our recipe. Autogen creates the configure script, configure creates the make file, the make file. Um, in the case of Windows, I almost always want the install. Uh, and to specify some location where the installed Emacs will land. This is where all of the recipes for packaging Emacs go. And if I were, uh, you know, using this as a way to upgrade, I personally would do that by ins by specifying an install path, quote unquote, on top of uh, a, a main installation. I don't do that. I update shortcuts manually based on what specifically I want to try uh, in an effort to, to, to denotice uh, interesting patches and confirm they work on Windows, which mostly they do. There's not a lot of code, to, in my experience, that is uh, Windows specific and very, very little around the build process. All right. Huge rabbit hole zone. And I still have a minute before I have to uh, kick off the first part of our demo. So let's let's keep keep diving in. Um, the those specific part Windows specific parts beside the .exe extension that we're going to find slammed onto all of our familiar uh, executables. We're also going to have Emacs Client W, which is a wrapper that hides. Um, how hard it is to get uh, to, to, to get a, how bad the abstraction is between the window management layer and the GUI and the, all the different parts on Windows. Essentially, it wants to create a shell window if we just double click emacs.exe. So Emacs Client W uh, and run Emacs are going to solve that problem. Um, uh, wrapping Emacs and Emacs Client respectively. And um, just uh, all right. So let's let's go ahead and do something. I'll, I'm going to take away the ticker here for a minute. And what you're not seeing is off stage. I am killing that so we don't get builds in parallel. Um. <laughs> so. Um, so at this point, I'm going to open up a shell and I'm going to start talking just a little bit about uh, my local build environment, which we haven't gotten into. In fact, just to make that even easier, let's um, let's just take a look at it a little bit. Probably the easiest spot is here. All right, so here we have the familiar Windows My Computer interface. I have 
the G drive and the H drive, four terabyte drives um, dedicated to my um, really overblown Emacs build process. Um, this just lets me be super lazy. There's no reason you need any massive amount of storage to do any of this. Um, inside here, and now I'll actually switch you back to the other screen. Um, we'll, we'll find Oops. Sorry about that. I didn't take the time to label that button. Um, so here you can see the primary output that, that, that I'm looking at through this automated process. I come along, I look at the bad bug reports, or maybe I'm just restarting my computer and choosing what Emacs or version at random. And then in that case, I look at this modified date and I say, um, my config that I you know, that I'm playing with right now is all set for Emacs 30, or I'm testing them both and I'm relaunching both of these, right? So for me, that starts by diving into the install folder, going into the bin folder, which looks exactly the way my automation leaves it. I then come in to run the run Emacs and I create a shortcut um, to it. So I'm a keyboard person so that's usually done like this and then I just know that the context menu is going to come up in the right place so I'll come up and um, possibly change the change the shortcut right if I don't mess with it um, so here's where I'll add my minus Q if that's kind of where my world is at, or it kind of depends on what I'm doing with these, which varies week to week. Um, so restarting my Emacs, uh, involves doing the same thing, going to my desktop and where you'll find a number of Emacs shortcuts and, um, updating the shortcut in the same manner, Joint actually, maybe we'll just Let's go back there and just show it. So if we look at, for example, my ERC, you can see it's going to be pointing at one of these clones, and then it's going to maybe tell me that I want, it wants to be full screen. No, not currently. And then it might uh, have some stuff in there about auto-loading a config and what connections I'm going to some commands I've defined to start connections. All right, and sorry, I got a phone call. I was checking it wasn't in an or the organ the other organizers giving me the hook. <clears throat> so, um, all right, so that's that's probably enough on the local system. Let's get back to the, to to building Emacs. And now it hopefully makes a certain amount of sense when I say we're gonna wander over to the H drive and recreate the structure that um, both my process sort of assumes. And the scripts you'll find in the admin NT uh, build dist folder in source used to assume. Those scripts are in need of some love. And in just a little bit, I'll be mentioning a build, uh, a, uh, a, 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 a particular bug that you might want to pay attention to if you're interested in making a self installer. All right. So. Um, we're going to create uh, an Emacs build directory. And we've got a handy get clone stage, get clone command stage for ourselves. That would work. Um, do not currently see anybody lobbying for that. So instead, we will run the rather faster. Uh, w get command on Savannah, which is not pasted in here. Oh, nice. Let's see if I can freehand it. Not going to do it. Uh, okay. 
beg your pardon, I'm grabbing a URL from the internet. Uh, okay, yeah, I can, I can, honestly, I can freehand it, whatever. Actually, sorry, I, uh, I didn't have that bookmarked and all handy like I thought I did. Um, so we'll just say ftp.gnu.org slash, uh, what is it, pub emacs, emacs-29.1, uh, dot par, dot I don't really, really think I'd have this command sitting around. It makes me want to scrap the whole demo. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. How am I doing? Sure. Time? Um, I think at least 15 minutes. Um, but in the command that you were freehanding, should the pub be GNU instead? Oh. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. All right. And then we'll... And I'm not sure I provided commands for this either. But it is trivially easy to do. And while that happens, we'll get to move on a few slides. Um, the configure script, I'm not talking about in a lot of detail, but I do want to mention that the GNU binaries are provided with native uh, comp uh, compilation enabled. That's the feature that uses GCC, libgcc git on Windows, if available, that libgcc git will be used. Um, but when, but uh, if, if uh, Emacs has that feature, then it will take byte control compile uh, native code and uh, asynchronously compile that as needed uh, with the ahead of time feature. We're going to do as much of that ahead of time. And for folks that are consuming the Windows binary, the thinking goes that they might not have MySys2. They might not have libgcc JIT. They might be happy that they're enable, you know, allowed to run the Emacs on their local environments. Um, uh, at all, <laughs> you know, in a maybe a lockdown uh, corporate context. So aside that, um, there's your first glimpse at the configure um, program that we're going to run in a moment. In fact, I'm going to go as far as putting it on the clipboard. Um, really just looking at this, the AOT flag is the one I'd call attention to, but it's worth understanding that Windows doesn't provide a DBUS capability, so a Windows native program isn't going to be able to depend on DBUS. We're going to we're gonna explicitly ask that that be left out. I think that's actually optional in its documentation. I think uh, the configure program is smart enough to know that we don't want DBUS uh, on Windows. Um, otherwise, we tend to compile with things. Um, there, there's missing documentation. We could say the uh, all of the libraries are treated in the way I mentioned. In that, um, JPEG support will be available as long as uh, JPEG is is available in our environment, and the configure script certainly notices that. Um, the GNU provided binaries are provided with minus O2, and that's also my default personally on Windows. Um, however, and I'm going to skip this since I mentioned it. Um, mentioned uh, and uh, um, so I guess I'll say um, you can uh, say with the, the, it's worth knowing that you if you're not one reason that that you're building might be because you want to turn off native compilation for whatever reason. If you have low JIT, JIT but don't want Emacs to use it, uh, especially as that default looks like it could be changing with Emacs 30. Um, the uh, the debug configuration. Um, this is this is the uh, kind of uh, what what I'm currently using with some commentary uh, I've seen on the Emacs development list. All right, let's check on our checkout and see if we can't get a build running. Um, this is a release build, so I won't be starting with 
Uh, so we'll start by hopping into its directory. And we um, we have uh, but not okay. So that tells us we're going to run our configure program, but we don't need to run uh, config IC. So. Uh -oh. So let's get that going, and uh, hopefully that's showing through just enough to be fun, not too much to be distracting. Um, the uh, the unoptim uh. uh, uh, uh um, please report issues if your Emacs is crashing uh, to the Emacs development list, not to me personally, um, although you are, of course, welcome to copy me um, if you especially, if I'm subscribed to that list, so I get all the mail, so I don't mind being copied, uh, and uh, as well, if you think it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, related to packaging, that actually makes sense or Windows related even, and uh, it could be tested with an extra snapshot that should be uploaded to the GNU Alpha site. I could look at that if I have time. There's with the configure script to make file for Emacs is really, really complicated. If time permits, which I'm you know now confident it will not, we will look at uh, a make file that I tried writing that uh, orchestrates this whole process that I'm talking about. Um, as, uh, let's see, so the build, uh, build process, uh, I run my builds with, uh, explicitly specifying the max CPU, uh, with minus J, but minus B1 to get the full build, uh, full login to your recipes. That is probably the magic thing met, um, to, to understand with, uh, Or that uh, th that that uh, <laughs> that I'm glad that I know uh, as I'm trying to write my automations. Uh, the um, so I call that out here. The binary uh, releases. Uh, um, okay, so in this section, we're going to start to get into what are all those files, and there's a bug report related to that that I didn't get into here. So. Um, that's kind of to the point about the less said about this, the better. Uh, that's my explanation for stepping through some of these slides. Uh, of course, we'll share them all, uh, all um, hopefully by the time that this video is published. Uh, I mentioned, um, I may have mentioned already freshly installed, but uh, fully installed. Uh, the, the the key distinction here is that uh, Emacs is distributed in, in the binary form for Windows with some DLL files that actually come from the MySys2 project. There's an implication there to GCC that I definitely want to get to it talking about. Um, so freshly installed means we haven't copied those binaries from the MySys2 uh, installation into the Emacs uh, installation. Uh, and then uh, when we re-archive that local Emacs installation, that's how we're going to create the full zip. So hopefully that actually is a pretty good summary of what all those files are. Um, but there are readme files uh, on the FTP that do a pretty good job uh, <laughs> if you can dig enough to find one. And my apologies for uh, tardiness getting a new version on that posted. Um, the Emacs, uh, so those dependencies uh, are listed within the Emacs itself. And as we'll just talk about in a moment, there's a way uh, that we can use, we can access that when we collect them in order to meet uh, the GCC requirement that is essentially to include um, include the sources for, the, for those binaries, the things that were compiled against. Um, the, uh, so, so here we go. We're, we're into the build process. Let's just take a look and see if configure it got done. It sure did. And now we can see a table of, of 
hopefully good, but good and bad news um, in potential, um, where we're learning that we're using the P-dumper strategy and any number of other things that we might be messing with as our motivation for, for building ourselves on Emacs. Um, again, this table represents uh, what you'll, what, what, what it looks like for me when I'm building for the GNU distributed binaries. All right, so um, kind of moving, moving as quickly as I can here. I'm at 40 after, I believe that's the five minute mark. So um, having just succeeded in, in configuring Emacs, I don't think we're gonna build it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't think we're going to actually get to running make install, um, but I have it sitting here on my keyboard or clipboard, assuming that we will, right? No. Uh oh, wow. I think I've managed to confuse this. All right. So for me, that looks simply like uh, make uh, v equals one install. Uh, prefix equals, uh, and we can at least get it kicked off. And that, com that command is just, uh, just n is no, no different than I showed on the slide where I, where I gave it. Uh, I wasn't planning to stop and explain it. I was just planning to paste it in. So, so, so again, recapping the rest of the process here and maybe actually making it, if you can believe it or not, through the rest of these slides, um, we, to, to, to create the full set of binaries, we're going to need a no dependent, no depth archive that's without the MySys2 uh, DL, provided DLLs, just the things that we compile as part of making Emacs. Um, the uh, the build depth zip script is uh, provided with the source distribution is your tool for uh, meeting the GPL requirement to provide source as mentioned before. Um, there is a second bug that I did uh, include some more information on in my notes already um, that uh, that gets into the details of this other feature I alluded to. Um, I'll just skip into that. Um, we, we can pretend with with uh, with a an appropriate version of that which you may need to patch uh, to to have you can list out the dependencies and, and that version as well can consider the dependencies of the Emacs binary versus the hard coded list you might find depending on when you look at this file in the source tree the diff um, so I also have a hack here that uh, works around the absolute requirement to run this with the MySys2 and not the MinGW64 script. Um, once we've made that zip file that contain that's that's our installed Emacs without the DLLs provided by MySys2. We'll then unpack the dependencies that were created by that Python script we just talked about from the Emacs source tree. At that point, once those are unpacked, we can now make what's called the full installer, or sometimes I might call it the unqualified installer, because it's just going to be called Emacs 29.1 zip um, and that uh, that file which which creates the archive uh, that uh, that 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 file is exactly the same plus the uh, the dependencies that we unzipped in the bin folder of the installed Emacs the uh, executable self installer which I would love to have more time to talk about I gave a few pointers here on the hard part of running it most importantly if I've installed in any kind of funny looking name, I end up renaming it to like Emacs-29.1 or Emacs-29.30.0.50 or whatever. And I just rename that installed Emacs folder. And then I go to the root of wherever I created that, the, the parent directory above it. And that's where I make my copy of the Emacs NSI, uh, the, the NSA script. And, uh, 
that's also where I, <clears throat> and, and then, uh, then from that parent directory, I execute, uh, make and sys, uh, here, I, as mentioned, um, I, I can get away with this because I have it on my path and it's my recollection. I think I tested this and couldn't reproduce the problem. So I didn't document it here, but I've had some problems with running this when, uh, when NSYS wasn't on my path. The, uh, the 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 final step here and the last the GPL requirement is to include all the sources except when I'm doing a release build I always do this um, and that's the GNU practice when making snapshot binaries is to go ahead and include the sources even though we might have the specific revision number um, our thinking is we want absolute clarity um, that that somebody uh, can say, okay, this binary did this thing, show me the source for it. I'm gonna go take that into my own open source, or <laughs> yeah, maybe they would, the jerks, them into my own open source project and um, off, you know, off they go. Uh, and that needs to be possible. Um, so um, beyond that, the rest of this is, is really detailed that you find covered in the GNU maintainers manual. Um, this is the, the current set of Windows binaries that um, it's busily working on, creating a like-for-like -like, uh, mirror to behind the scenes here is called uh, 29.1 underscore two. Um, and I have a lot of automation uh, available on this site. So at this point, I'm just, I think I'm only a minute, 40 seconds over. I'm gonna invite my uh, co-organizers back onto the call or all any volunteers that want to jump in and anybody if there's people on the BBB I'd be happy to take questions if there aren't um, I have a screen full of uh, the automation stuff ready to go as a, kind of a second ring in my circus today so if you're still with me thanks a lot for joining me and I really enjoyed this talk uh, if this is where we're gonna close it out I don't know where we're at for schedule today Thanks a lot for a great talk, Corwin. Um, in terms of like schedule, yeah, you went over a little bit for the official like um, schedule or time of your talk, but I think uh, we actually have maybe like six or seven more minutes um, here on stream for um, questions and such. If, if folks have questions or if you want to like quickly maybe show one or two more things, um, but I think the hard stuff is about like maybe ten minutes ish for now, and then we'll have to rush over to. Um, uh, for the closing remarks, so. Well, that sounds awesome. Okay, so I'm looking at the the dev chat. Uh, I see a comment on cross compiling Emacs. But I'm sorry, I'm looking at IRC primarily. But uh, feel free to jump in if you're on uh, BBB with me, or uh, uh, if if you put something on the pad, I'm sure uh, we'll see it between the two of us. Uh, over here. <laughs> okay, so cross compiling Emacs for Serenity. I haven't tried really any cross compiling. I think that would be very interesting. I would most likely focus on doing exactly what I do on a GNU system, completely ditching. Um, so I guess with my my remaining time, rather than walking through code um, for my automation, which can be another talk if in fact there's an interest in that. Um, uh, I want to, I guess, say a couple words about the non-free operating system that uh, I'm using here. I did my best to use no non-free software other than the uh, the operating system that is the context for this talk. In preparing this talk for you, <laughs> I personally have a lot more uh, time and energy, I have to say, invested in proprietary tools for doing a lot of the things that, <laughs> that that go into this. So I really respect the work of people that pull that off. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get my pre-recorded stuff uh, kind of in order for everybody, but I just want to stress like uh, it is all absolutely possible and just hats off to everybody that, that used uh, entirely free software to get there get the recordings done in time um and what you did see 
unless it was provided by the operating system. And my presentation today was all uh, free software with the debatable exception of NSYS, which styles itself as open source, maybe for uh, marketing reasons. <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, certainly we can get all that source. Thanks for that, no, Corin. It's good to know that uh, building or uh, yeah, doing the builds of Emacs for Windows on Windows can be done uh, using only free software. Yeah, absolutely. Probably the right closing note, right? <laughs> um, I just uh, think thanks again to the organizers for bearing with me. And like every time I was like, you guys, I'm terrible at this. They're just like, no, you're doing fine. Keep going. You did a great job live last time. You can do it live, you know, and and do, saying all the right things to just uh, encourage me to come back uh, this year and every year. <laughs> Well, as I said before, we were uh, very lucky to have you and the rest of the team, of course, as well. And um, goes without saying, but all the speakers and all the, uh, the audience, the participants as well. So, um, so uh, are we? We're still live over here. That you know, you know me. I'm the Mike Hog that I am. I can't resist. Um, throwing throwing up another screen here, and uh, in fact, let's go ahead and go back to our to our crawler, right? And I'll bring back our build if it finishes, and maybe we'll show making the installer as well. Um, uh, but I have the CPU count turned down a little bit here. Uh, note I didn't specify minus J here. Um, so, uh, over here, here's my automation, uh, in case you do want to take a look, I can at least provide the orientation of what you're looking at. Scrape log is probably my first thing I want to show off. Um, it's not beautiful, but this works, uh, pretty well for me to get a sense if something might have changed in terms of how many warnings or errors are happening when I build Emacs. So I have this whole automation going on and I frequently want to answer the question, you know, what's the change rate in uh, warnings or what have you. So this kind of gives me a count of that. Um, so from there, uh, a crude CI is the script we're, we're watching run in the other pane. Um, we can see it's, uh, just starting to do its thing again. And uh, the make file I mentioned, this is a top down rewrite of everything else that I've done. It has some bugs right now. Um, the, uh, the build distribution is the main script that I use for my personal builds. This is what is run by the crude CI script. Uh, it has a fun tie-in to this uh, web interface here um, where we can, you don't need the port number when you go to it. That's just if I'm gonna post. Um, the, uh, blah, 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 blah. This, this script is really long and complicated and probably needs some diving into, but you can see that um, one of the complexities I have to deal with is that I, I'm going to need a, something in the format of an Emacs dash version for strategic um, NSYS reasons. So uh, it, it takes care of kind of every complexity in some, that I mentioned today in some respects, um, as does the make file. Build release is um, another fairly useful incarnation of this this is just focused on the release process and this does work uh, for example to create the under the the you know like i like well i did like uh for like files as far as i can tell to what are currently posted uh, for emx 29.1 and the release candidate um so i'll probably use that next time and if it's still like for like i'll probably post the ones that came from this um, 
uh, building a tree sitter. I made some DLLs there if you're looking for hints on how to get going or just simply uh, a huge long list of Git repositories that make grammars you can use. That is here as well. Um, finally, I mentioned I have a um, I have a, a website where I publish my own personal snapshots that I make. Uh, that folder full of install directories, but all of the usual GNU style binary distributables, including the source code and the source code for the dependencies. Um, the uh, uh, so this program is another one of those uh, complicated find commands, and therefore potentially the most useful thing in here to, to you. Um, and here I'm deleting uh, binaries older than seventeen. Uh, everything except the uh, node apps file and the sources of it you'll find on my website. Currently, those indefinitely, I'll probably roll out 120 days or something um, for those eventually. Oh, uh, I can talk about this one even. Um, the uh, <clears throat> So here you'll see the two branches that I'm tracking. The job of this script is uh, this runs on the website. I call it with a, like a remote rsync uh, type uh, or an SSH remote uh, SSH command. Um, and right after the rsync, rsyncing up any new Emacs's that I built. And uh, it's, uh, its job is to update my fancy directory indexing. So let's look at Corwin's website. Here's my Emacs 29 folder. We have about two more minutes, Corwin. Yeah, it'll take that entire two minutes to uh, load this <laughs> directory because I am because I have not yet ever pruned any of these dang binaries. So every version of uh, Emacs 29 that I've ever made for myself is probably here. <laughs> nice. Uh, I strongly recommend that you bookmark this folder if you're using these for something and you always want the latest. Um, so here, this particular uh, latest 29, uh, Emacs 29 latest, or simply replace the 29 with 30 to get those. Uh, alas, no, no such luck for tree sitter. But if we look at uh, that Aww. live this long without making a typo and now look at me. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> so here, um, and we can see the iconification and so on, even in the tree sitter folder. This is all I'm talking about, about the fanciness that's set up by that other script that I'm showing over here. And run after each time I run the upload, it just looks to see if anything's new and adds some lines to the .ht access file. Um, I'm particularly proud of this one, I'm not going to lie. Um, linking out to each each uh, project that we're using, letting us know the commit version, and then uh, for the DLLs, quick link out to the log and the signature file for this DLL. Um, I find that a lot, just a lot more readable than uh, listing them all out individually, and I'd love to do something like that on the GNU site. So I'm, I think we've got to be out of time by now. I've just got to say, hey, thanks again for having me. Uh, for those that uh, watched the talk, either live or after the conference, I uh, appreciate everyone's support to get me to the point where I'm able to uh, to do this, this, this cool volunteer task, uh, which is fun and easy to do. And reach out to me if you're interested in helping with it. Well, awesome. Thanks a lot for the awesome talk, Corbin. And uh, of course, as a, a fellow core uh, core organizer uh, for the, for all that you do um, in and around Emacs Conf, and of course for uh, Gnu Emacs as well, it's much appreciated. Big. 
big words from coming from you, my friend. Um, Cheers. Thanks for the kind words. Cheers, my pleasure. All right, and with that, I think we're going to uh, wrap up the dev uh, track here, and uh, we'll be with you again shortly in a few minutes on the gen stream, the gen track for the closing remarks for today. Um, only for today, because we're going to be back uh, tomorrow again as well. So don't go anywhere, and uh, see you on the gen track in a bit. Oh my God, I did it. We got done within the time. You're my hero, um, and thank you so much for just keeping me honest there and uh, like helping me keep my eye on the time and such. I have to look at the recording and see whether you feel like doing it again. I'm sorry, I had my sound screwed up, and I'm sorry if I talked over somebody. I couldn't hear anything on Mumble until this very moment. Oh, uh, because he used your webcam for it, um, like as a like a virtual webcam thingy, it was low res, especially when things were changing as you were scrolling around. So we'll see what kind of reco recording we can recover from it, and then you can decide whether you maybe want to clean it up with like screenshots and. Oh, I, rec really, really I recorded on this end too. It shouldn't have that problem with my recording. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I uh, think we're still live on the dev stream. Someone could uh, take that off and keep it. Thanks. Oh, okay. Yes, because uh, I'll I'll set it to rebroadcast. Yeah, I, I love doing that for the closing remarks. So it's a fine tradition. Or it's a tradition now because I'm pretty sure this means we've done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I once heard that, you know, uh, as a fanish, meaning like a fanish is a term of endearment for a science fiction fan to another. We say we're we're fans or things we do are fanish. And uh, a fanish tradition then is if you do it three times, it's tradition. But um, we're on a budget here, so. <laughs> Yep. All right, I think we should um, head over to Mumble and talk on Mumble um, and de decide and see like which big, big blue button room we're going to be in for closing. Okay, so we're clear on BBB here? Yep, I think so.